Referrals can be one of the best places to get business from, and it is nothing but joyous when somebody says, hey, I've got two people that are looking to buy, maybe even sell. Ding, 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 ding. Let's go. And then we reach out to those people and it doesn't go exactly the way we want, or we don't get them to meet with us for a consultation, or it just seems to start to tail off and it doesn't seem as if they're motivated. So this video is for you all about a live call with an agent breaking down this situation with a, a couple training gems that'll help you get it back on track or make sure they always head down the right path from that initial connection. Um, so sure. I got a couple referrals from my Temecula client. She sent me two people. She sent me her brother. Her brother is trying to sell a place in Oceanside. Um, I guess he's been working on it for a while. I've pulled some comps on it. It's, he probably owes about 200K on it. Most likely he's worth around 750. Um, talked to him about, I reached out to him about that. Haven't been able to get really in touch with him. Um, we talked one time and you can kind of tell you might not be ready. She also sent me a coworker of hers that has a property in Poway that she is um, trying to sell. This is the exact words that she used. Hey, Nathan, I have one of my managers wanting to sell her house. It's in Poway. She's working with someone, but they are lagging it. I told her how amazing you've been. And then she gave me her number, Liliana. Um, but they have an active agreement, so I can't really pursue that technically. I just wanted to see kind of from your perspective, how would you deal with both of them? They're kind of different angles on the not responsive train. And um, just want to see what you think. The um, follow-up question I would ask your client on the person that is on, are they on the market? Um, I don't believe so. I can ask, I will ask my client. Cause you don't have the address yet, right? No, I don't have the address. How do you know they have an active agreement? Um, and she said, I believe that they're on the market. She said they've been trying to sell. Great. So what I would do is I would go back to your client and say, um, since they have an active, you know, Hey, we specialize in, you know, I would say this to your client. I would say, Hey, we specialize in selling homes that were already on the market or that didn't sell. Um, you know, we, it's one of our main pieces of business from our clients. We're really familiar with why properties don't sell and what the problem is. Since your manager is on the market, she has an active listing agreement in order for me to ethically reach out to her. She either a needs to tell you to have, tell you to say, it's okay to call me um, or she needs to reach out to me directly. Can you make that happen before uh, I speak to her? Okay. Yeah. Can I hit a double whammy on that and be like, and I haven't been able to talk, get in touch with your brother either. And or is that my concern? How many times, have, when did you initially get introduced to the brother? And when did the you brother was maybe about him? two weeks ago. And you spoke to him about two weeks ago? I spoke to him, yeah, when they gave me the number initially, I spoke with him and he said to send him some information. I'm, trying, I'm blanking a little bit on the exact details of the, com the conversation, but he was open to me talking with him again about information on um, his property. I and reached out to him. Go he's, ahead. he's fixing up the property currently? Um, yes. Yeah, so he, I believe that he's some sort of contractor esque person, but he's been living in it forever. So it's not like it's a, like right now fixing, like he's been working on the property since he's bought it and it's probably, you know, it's probably done, you know, I don't think, I think that's what they were kind of saying. Like he's and you spoke to him, you spoke to him two weeks ago and yeah. Sent, what was the what was the re, you know so he ended with send me some information and then what send him some information then we'll we'll talk about um like we'll talk about our next steps on you know trying to get the property to market and did you send him information what did you send um him? i did send him some information i sent him some just like ballpark numbers on um the market and the, some numbers on the like data with the chart on info sparks about you know where we're at in the market how we're looking at it was the up remember we had that conversation about the uptick that was around that same time um yeah. but it was like how the market's on a upswing and where we're at with the inventory so i sent them all that data i sent them some round numbers on just the market over in that area but i told them hey 
you know, similar properties that are um, of the size and, you know, with good condition are selling in this like mid to high sevens. Um, so we could definitely talk about, you know, getting his property sold, you know, near that. And why wouldn't he meet with you? Um, oh, I thought you were going to continue. Um, so the initial conversation, it didn't seem that he was 100% you know, ready, I think yet. I think he was more in the information seeking phase. Um, but, you know, I don't think necessarily I pushed for the meeting like I should have. Maybe I was more, I don't think I, you know, it was like the first time speaking. So I think I should have probably pushed for that appointment. I was thinking I was going to get him on the second one, you know, but yeah sometimes sometimes i've had the I, you know i've had the experience of like thinking because oh well it's a referral and it's from the friend i'm going to change my process a little bit and i'm going to yeah. be a little more confident that they're just going to fall into my lap and i think that every agent has experienced that and it's always a reminder to stick to our process right um the process is in place to ensure that we get the highest rate of conversion whether they're an internet lead an expired or a referral and so I bet going back to that conversation, the initial conversation, knowing what you know now, you would have taken it in a different approach. The, the situation with every single person is, you know, hey, I'm in the information re research phase. Fantastic. I do, a, I do a, a listing consultation that gives you all of the answers to all of your questions and gives you multiple different strategies to ensure you get the most amount of money with the least amount of effort on your preferred timeline, when are you available to meet for that? Yeah. And, and finding out exactly, you know, Hey, out of curiosity, you know, what are the top three things you're looking for in a real estate agent? Right? Like nothing changes just because he's yeah. a refer referral. Nothing changes because he's the, the family member of your client and you're still walk. I mean, you still want to walk into it because right now you've sent him some information, which what if he was hoping for eight? Yeah, it's true. Well, you're the agent that said mid sevens or high sevens. So is there any reason for him to talk to you? Um, How many times yeah. have you fought? Not right. Not really. And, and then by the way, uh, you know, again, going to why would you why would you buy the cow if you can get the milk for free? When I'm always extremely I don't talk about my the you know, I don't talk about my perspective of the market. I don't talk about my perspective of price. I don't talk about marketing strategies. That's exactly why we need to meet. Yeah. Right. Because I don't want to give him, I don't want to give him, I want to get in person. I want to see the property. I want to see the work. I want to have time to build rapport. And so when you left off, he said, you know, Oh, send me some information. You give him a little information. He's gone ghost. How many times have you followed up with him at what increments so far? Um, I followed up with him three times so far. Um, I followed up with him after I sent the information um, and that was so you send him the information. Book. Let me just break this down and get so You send him the information via email, via email and followed, up, followed up with him call. via text, email, call, phone call, phone call. left him a voicemail left saying, Hey, just want to make sure you get the information. Yes. And, and then, then I waited. I don't know. I think I waited until that was like a Tuesday or Wednesday. I think I waited until the end of the week or beginning of the next week. And, and I sent did. him another call and okay. I called him again, didn't go through didn't leave a voicemail. And then I reached out via text message. Um, I think, I think it was phone call, didn't leave a voicemail. Then I texted him and I sent him a message, um, just stating, Hey man, just wanted to like talk about if you got the information, wanted to see what your think your thoughts were on the info. And, um, yeah, just kind of ghost. Yep. So we want to, we want to, we, whenever we're reaching out to prospects, this is important. We always want to slow down and think about what's in it for them. Right. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I just did a, a marketing video on a funnel for, you know, selling the coursework. And I literally say in the video, hey, I'd tell you, I would tell you about my accolades and my success, but I know that right now you don't care. The only thing you want to know is what's this going to do for you. So let's get yeah. right into it. If you want to check out my LinkedIn and look at my track record, I know it'll satisfy you, but let's move forward to what you want. And so when you say, when you say to somebody, hey, I just wanted to get your, I wanted to get your thoughts on what you were thinking that's satisfying your needs. I That's sent true. you information. I want your feedback on it. And people have a distrust for salespeople. And I want your, and sometimes people here, you want my feedback so you can figure out how to get in my brain so you can convince me to do what you want, which is work with you so you can sell my house. 
Now, I'm not saying that's for a fact going on, but what we do know is that this guy is thinking about selling his house. He's in a time frame to where we want to meet him as soon as possible. And we've given him information to where at this point he can justify, you don't need my thoughts. I've got yours. Yeah. So what true. I want, what I would do with this, this person is I would send him a text message um, saying, Hey, the numbers just came out and it's changing how we're marketing and it changes the previous information that I've sent you. I really, uh, uh, it's really impacting what sellers are doing as they're coming to the market. When are you available to chat next? Yeah, right. Nice. But again, I want to frame it as much as possible. Like, hey, the there's new information that'll benefit you in how you're strategizing, bringing your property to the market to get the most amount of money. We've got a couple different things we've seen success with. I want to make sure you have the info so you get what you want. When's the best time to chat for a minute or two? By the way, when is the work on the house going to be done? Now, as soon as he texts you back, I'd call him. Yeah. If he's like, if he's like, house will be done in a couple of weeks, what's going on in the market? I call him. Yeah. I don't text him back. And if he and if he doesn't pick up, I then text him back saying, This is better for this is more of a conversation than a communication. What's your schedule like? Yeah. Are you available today at two? You want to get out, you want to get away from the habit that he's going to expect of he can just text you and you'll give him information and then he can, he can control where he goes. Yeah. Okay. And as much as it's like, sometimes we get caught in that. Well, if I don't give him information, well, what if I give him the information and he loves what I have to say? And then he follows up with me. Well, let's look at the history. So far we've done that formula. And it's not working. Mm -hmm. It's true. So we want to change the behavior. You know, it's like if you if you go to a therapist and you tell them that everybody takes advantage of you, the therapist is going to say, well, it's your fault. You're allowing them to do so. So we want to change the behavior. We got to change the results. And and it's a perfect time because the market data is about to come back. And if he says, hey, I'm available today at four, let's talk. Say, hey, I'm booked at four. How about tomorrow afternoon at two and the numbers will be out or you know, he may say, I can talk at the end of the week. Fantastic. Uh, I'll have all the information prepared. Are you available Thursday at four? Go to set an appointment to get on the phone with him and go into your normal process of building value, seeking to understand, identifying what they want out of the top three agents, building out the timeline and finding out a good time to stop by. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I would not hit a double whammy with the with the uh, uh, referrer. I would I would ask them to get permission from the manager to reach out directly or have them reach out to you. And if she asks about the brother. brother, then you say, "Yep, I'm followed up. We have we have not completed our conversations yet." Yeah, just one thing at a time. Yeah, because. Uh, it's, you know, and I had a, a referral, a referral one time where I gave her a referral. She, she referred me somebody and I gave them a cut code knife and she said, well, I don't want the knife until they close. And I said, you've done your job. You've referred me the business. The rest is on me. Yeah. Right. I want to reward the action of referring me business, but converting them into a client is on us. Yeah. And I don't want to have, I don't want the refer the referral getting hounded by the referrer. If they want to do that on their own, that's great. But I don't want to be the one that's like, hey, could you go do my job for me? Yeah, that's true. 100%. Okay, cool. And I would I would recommend giving the referral, you know, you can go into thanks.io. You can send her a $10 Starbucks gift card and say, you know, hey, thanks for referring me. I sent you a note card with a gift in it. Yeah. Hey, I'm you, want to, you want to reinforce or even just drop her off a, you know, a Starbucks gift card or something, you want to reinforce the behavior. Yeah. 100%. I'll, I'll get her something for sure. It doesn't have to be anything. It just has to be something that says you appreciate her and you went out of your way to do so. Mm -hmm. Good stuff.